Hey, what's up guys? This is Stefan from projectlifemastery.com and today I wanna to share with you guys a little bit about the journey towards becoming an online entrepreneur, building your online business, and talk about some of the common challenges that I know a lot of people face. You might be facing them as well in the journey, the path that you're on right now to building your online business and hopefully provide some solutions for you guys uh, moving forward. You know, I work with a lot of people that don't have much time to build their business. And I don't know your situation right now, but for a lot of people, they've got a job, they've got a nine to five, they're working 40 hours a week, sometimes more. And it's not like you can just quit your job and pursue this full time. You need that job to support yourself, to pay your bills, to take care of your family. That job can also be a useful asset for you that you could then use some of the cash flow that you're making from that to invest it into your business, invest it in yourself, your growth, your education, your learning. You know, If you're smart, you do that because that's gonna help you accelerate and fast track things a lot more. A lot of people also, you know, they've got a family, they've got kids, they've got a husband or a wife. And it's not like you can just neglect that either. You know, you gotta spend time with your, your partner in life and with your kids. Now, there are gonna be sacrifices that you have to make in order to build an online business. That's the reality of it because anything of value that you wanna create, part of getting to that is knowing what you have to give up in order to have that. So. You might have to sacrifice, I hate to say it, some time with your friends, some time having fun, sometimes even with, you know, with your family. And uh, you know, a lot of people, they don't wanna face that, they don't wanna go through that, but I mean, part of getting what you want, like I said, is knowing what you have to give up to have it. You know, I know I had to make that choice as well in my life, in my early 20s. You know, thankfully, I didn't have a family at that time, so I didn't, I didn't have to sacrifice that too much, but I had to sacrifice a lot of fun. Everyone else was going out partying and having fun and my friends were inviting me out on Friday, Saturday night and I had to learn how to say no. You know, I'd love to, but man, I'm focused on my business right now. I've focused on this. I had to sacrifice a lot of sleep in some cases, which was not healthy whatsoever. So my health took, took a step back in some ways because I had to dedicate more time, whatever time that I could, to build my business. But it was with the, the belief and the mindset that it's a short-term sacrifice, it's temporary. It's not for life. It's only gonna be for a period of time. It might be for the next few years, but at a certain point, I'm gonna have freedom in my life. I'm gonna have a business that can provide a certain lifestyle, that I can have financial freedom, that I can quit that job and free up those eight plus hours a day, you know, 40 hours a week, and I can work from home or I can work from anywhere in the world and uh, I would be able to, you know, at that point, sleep as much as I want, or I'd be able to spend as much time with my friends as I want, and live a lifestyle that most people aren't willing to, to pay that price for. So, knowing what that price is, and you gotta ask yourself, am I willing to pay that price? Am I willing to go through the short-term sacrifices along the way? Okay, because especially when you're first building a business, there's a learning curve. Everything is brand new. You know, I don't know what your level of experience is right now, but I know for myself, when I first started, everything was brand new to me. I didn't even know that the, uh, an online business was a reality. I didn't even know that concept existed. You know, I was just like, because for me, I was just programmed the condition, as many of us are. When we're younger, we go to school and university, and our parents, they all say, go to school, get good grades, get a job, you know, uh, you know and just work, work really hard at that job, and then one day you can retire. And that was my blueprint. That was my whole mindset belief system. So when I discovered you could make money on the internet and you didn't have to have a college education to do that, that you could just learn from other people that have already been there and done it, that have gotten the results, and you can model them, you can go through training and courses. Like for me, that was amazing because I'd much rather put my time, energy, and effort and money into that than it was to go to university, go to school, because university or school is very expensive very time consuming and at the end of it, you really just get a certificate that has the potential to get you a job one day in the future. So um, <laughs> so for me, everything was brand new. There's a huge steep learning curve and everybody's kind of have to go through that. I didn't know what email marketing was. I didn't know all these different softwares and tools and uh, blogging and you know videos. I didn't, I, for me, I was very shy. I was not a good speaker when I was younger. Um, I used to have a lisp. I used to mumble a lot. I was not a good writer. I, when I was in high school, I mean, I was a C, C minus student. Um, the one thing that I think was an advantage for me was I was always kind of good in front of the computer because I played a lot of video games. I spent a lot of time 
you know, when I was shy and just very isolated at that point in my life, just playing on, you know, playing Counter Strike or playing, you know, Warcraft and all these different games, Diablo 2 and stuff. I used to immerse myself for hours and hours and hours. And so I had some competency in front of the computer, which is great. But for the most part, everything was brand new. I didn't know anything about marketing. And when you first get into this, it, it, it's almost like it's very exciting in the same time too because you're making all these discoveries that you never even heard of before. You didn't know, you know that you could send email broadcasts or have an email autoresponder and uh, you know, it can automate that whole thing. So that you learn that and you're like, wow, that's amazing. You didn't know that you could self-publish a book on Amazon and that anybody can do it. And then within 24 hours, once you hit the publish button, the book will be live on Amazon and now you're a published author that you have a book and you can make money from. Like, you know, that's just out of so many people's reality, they don't really think about that, you know? Or that you could, anybody can create a blog. And, you know, back, back when I started too, it's like there was no really softwares that are available today. It's like I remember back in an old job that I had, uh, we had to get a website designed. And it costs like thousands and thousands of dollars to hire a web designer. And uh, the website would like suck today. Um, but you had to like HTML code it. Like it was just so different. So in the world we live in today, it's like everything is new. Everything's exciting. It, it's like all these light bulbs go off in your head. You see the possibilities. It's kind of like in the movie The Matrix. You get the red pill and the blue pill. You take one of the pills and you just are ex um, you're like exposed to this brand new world and universe that you never knew existed before. So I'm not sure if you guys can relate to that or not. That's what I went through. And I decided once I, I saw this and I, I saw other people online, I heard these stories and other people sharing their success. I remember one time actually in my early 20s, um, I, ha I was on this date with a girl and we were at a comedy club and I came out and I had a friend that I ran into there that was also there too, it was outside. And he was friends with this guy who was in a Ferrari. And the guy was like 22, 20, 23 years old, like really young and is driving a Ferrari. And I was just blown away by this. I was like, I talked to my friend, I'm like, dude, what does this guy do? Like, how is it possible that this kid at 23 years old is driving a Ferrari? And he shared with me, you know, he does internet marketing, he does affiliate marketing and all this sort of stuff. So, you know, that things like that were just mind blowing to me. And I'm sure you guys can probably relate uh, to some extent to that. So everything is new. I decided, you know what, I've got to find a way to make this happen because when I would compare the, the, the possibility of an online business, like that, that career path, that opportunity, I'd compare it to every other option that I had. And I don't care what option that you could, you know, being a doctor, being a lawyer, uh, you know, being uh, an architect, like all the different options that you could present to me, I would choose online business more than all that stuff. Because I saw, okay, I could be a doctor or a lawyer, but that's tons of, you know, money and time in university. And yeah, you're making a, a six figure income maybe, but online business world was just way more attractive to me. The lifestyle, the freedom, uh, doing what you love, your mission, your purpose. So that, that's why I was really drawn to that. And I think a lot of people, when, they, when, you, when you compare it and you stack it up to anything else out there, any other career path, I don't know what, what comes close to that. So for me, I was like, I gotta find a way. This is it. Gotta find a way to make this happen. This is gonna be my life. I knew that I'd have to go through that learning curve. And the learning curve is challenging because at first, everything is brand new. You know, if you get training and courses and, and you learn from others, mentors, etc., really the value of that is you're fast tracking the process and you're shortening that learning curve. That's why it's always smart to invest in yourself because, you know, I could share with you, for example, like you could spend uh, weeks trying to learn something on your own that I could share with you in two hours how to do it or how to solve it. So. Obviously, it's a lot more efficient to learn in those two hours than you trying to spend weeks trying to figure that out. Always try to learn from others and fast track that process. So I started doing that when I, when I was uh, you know, first get, kind of getting into this. And I, I think many of you guys know that or are doing that as well. But a common mistake I see a lot of people make is they try to do too much at once. They learn all these different things. They're on information overload, but they have no idea how to apply it all. They don't have like a step-by-step -step program or guide of like, do step one. Okay, you've done that, okay, move on to step two. Okay, you've done that, move on to step three. You've done that, step four, step five. A lot of people, they just think, I'm gonna consume all the information and then I'm gonna take action with it. And that's often one of the worst things to do. You should, before you move on to step five or step 10, 
you got to complete step one. You know, there's kind of no point going so far ahead if you're not even completing, you know, the, the first step, the second step, the, the third step. And I think a lot of people, they, they go too far ahead in this journey, learning too much in advance that it just kind of overwhelms them and confuses them so much more. I'll give you an example of this. I have a, a friend of mine who knows so much about online marketing. Like he just has so much knowledge. Like he just loves to learn. He's just one of those information junkies. You know, he goes to the seminars, he reads all these books and studies and learns and learns and learns. And I've known this person for years and unfortunately he's just not succeeded. He's, he's not making any money. He's making some money, he's doing okay, but he's not really, you know, he's just kind of stuck. And, you know, and I've really looked at it, I've had this conversation with him many times, like it has become a detriment for him in ways to, to, to continue consuming content information. Because if you're not doing anything with it and applying it, then, then you're just getting more overwhelmed, overloaded, and you're not gonna get any results. And so here's this person that knows so much, probably even more than myself about online marketing and business, that's not getting results. And then uh, I look at someone like my girlfriend, Tatiana, who didn't know all this stuff that was out there, but she just focused you know, on like one or two things. You know, she started doing some, some Kindle publishing at first, was making like 500 bucks a month or so, and then transitioned into Amazon. But she was very focused with, with her education and her learning. She wasn't just kind of randomly learning about things way over here that aren't even related to what she's trying to accomplish. You know, and so because of that, she just learned it and she did it. Learned it and she did it. It's as simple as that, guys. You learn and you apply. Learn and apply. Do not keep learning until you've applied, okay? Once you've applied, now you're ready for the next step. Okay, apply that. Once you've applied that, now you're ready for the next step, okay? So that's also why I think courses that are step by step by step by step by step are really valuable because they can really guide you you know, guide you towards actually taking action, implementing what you're learning, and getting a certain level of result too. Um, also, I think, you know, a lot of people, there, there's a lot of skills that when you're first brand new, you're gonna have to learn. And especially because a lot of us, you know, a lot of people when they're brand new, they don't have the money to hire people. And so you have to go very broad in your skill set. So at first, you have to learn email marketing, copywriting. Uh, you're gonna have to learn how to, create content, how to maybe do some SEO, some PPC, uh, pay-per-click advertising, search engine optimization. You might have to learn uh, you know, how to do some uh, like technical type, excuse me, technical type stuff like WordPress and installing blogs and plugins and so working with softwares. Like you kind of have to go broad at first and just because you don't have the luxury of hiring people. But eventually what happens is a lot of people I see, they still stay broad and they don't become a specialist at anything. They don't become an expert at one or two things. You know, I, I believe that all of us, we should have what I call a master skill, a master skill. If you look at any master throughout history, they all have a master skill, okay? They're all really, 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 really good at one, maybe two things. Whether that's Leonardo da Vinci, Charles Darwin, whether that's you know, LeBron James or Stephen Curry or whoever it might be that you might look up and I don't, they're all really, really good at maybe one, two primary skills, okay? They're master skill. They might be good at a lot of other things too, but it's that one or two things, that's their specialty. That's their, their highest income producing skill. That's what they get paid for and they make the significant amount of money from that master skill set. And so once you kind of go broad, you got to identify, okay, I've learned all these skills, at least the basics of it, okay? What are the one or two things that I'm going to go deep with? Okay, what are the one or two things that I'm going to become a master at? Because to master something, it's going to take you years, okay? I mean, on average, it takes 10 years to really master something or 10,000 hours according to Malcolm Gladwell. So knowing that, you can't, you can't become a master at everything, okay? You've got to identify, okay, what are the the one or two master skills I'm gonna go deep with, I'm gonna study, I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna go deeper with training and courses and resources. And in a way, you kinda of have to neglect and, and kinda of close yourself off to some other skills out there. But, but the truth is, you don't need to know everything. You just gotta be really, really good at those one or two skills. And you can achieve a lot of success just with that. 
You know, for myself, for example, I was I have a lot of skills in this online marketing world and through my business, but I realized that trying to do everything is actually going to limit my success. So I decided, you know what? I've got to identify what is the one or two things I want to go deep with, I want to master, and that's going to make the biggest difference to my business. It's going to be something I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to love it. It's going to be aligned with my mission, my purpose, and it's you know going to be something I, I love to do. And for me, that was content creation. You know, I realized, you know what? This is the one thing that I I love it. You know, I love sharing with you guys in front of the camera. I love writing. I love you know, uh, interviewing people and learning new things and sharing it. It helps me so much in my life as well. So I decided, you know what? I want to get really good at that. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend the majority of my time doing that. Um, then I also decided, you know what? Maybe I'm going to get really, really good at, at email marketing, for example, you know, or, or copywriting. And oftentimes you want to pick a skill that is very hard to replace. It's a very high paid skill. Okay, so for example, uh, copywriting is a very high paid skill that you could have online. You know, I know a lot of copywriters that get paid over $10,000 just for a sales page, you know, to, to write a sales page. And often they'll actually take a cut of, uh, you know, whatever sales they'll get, like a small percentage of sales. So that, that's a skill that you can make a significant amount of money from if you really master it and get really, really good at that. Okay, um, what I would recommend that someone do. And what I would have done, looking back, is I would get a um, some sort of job, like a freelancing job, where I could go deep with that skill and make money from it while I'm building my online business. Okay, so I would try. To, so a lot of people they have their nine to five job that's not relevant towards what they're trying to build in their online business. What I would have personally done, I'm not sure if this is right for everyone. I would have quit my job because I, I was working a construction job at the time. So I was doing like demolitions and framing and, and I was covered in like sawdust all day and stuff. It was not, it was not helping or supporting my, 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 my skill sets that I wanted to develop and I needed to build an online business. So what I would have done is I would have quit that job. Okay? I would have found a job as a freelancer online doing something that's related to that primary skill so that I could practice it and cultivate that every day. Okay, so maybe, maybe, it's, um, maybe it's doing uh, social media. Okay, and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna become a master at social media. So you can go to a website like Upwork.com. You can post, you can apply to jobs there, and you can, you know, inter- get interviewed and whatnot. And you can get paid doing social media for someone else. Now, of course, you're gonna have to have some basic skill set, and you might have to start off small and slowly work your way up. But at least the income from that, you could then live off of that, and then you, you know, you're de- you're developing those that master skills, those skill sets. And that's going to help you as you're building your business, or maybe it's doing sales. You know, learning really, you know, becoming uh, skilled at sales, and that's a valuable skill that could then be transferred to your online business of what you're trying to build. Maybe it's a writing job. You know, maybe you want to go deep with writing and become a great writer. Then there's many jobs out there you can get hired and get paid to be a writer. You can develop that skill. You can earn that money. That money could help replace some of the income that you're making from your job. So, those are things that I would think about doing. And that way, you're gonna fast track that 10,000 hours, you know, the, the 10 years that a lot of people have to take to be able to build it, because at least those skills are supporting what you're trying to accomplish. You can maybe at least work from home and uh, actually have, you know, to cultivate those skill sets as you're trying to build your online business. Um, okay, so I wanna share maybe a few more things with you. I'm not sure how long this video will be, but uh, I wanna go back to the time aspect too. Um, you have to become very diligent about how you spend your time. You have to become very regimented. You have to treat your online business like a job. Okay. Oftentimes, a lot of people can struggle because they have no accountability. Um, you know, they don't have a coach or a mastermind or a boss or someone that's holding them accountable to make sure that you follow through. You know, when you have a job, you have to show up at whatever hours that your boss tells you to. You have to do whatever your boss tells you to do. And if you don't, you get fired. There's a consequence. And if you treat your online business the same way, you will make progress. You will get results. But you have to say, okay, if I work from nine to five, then the hours I'm gonna spend working on my online business is maybe 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And you're gonna do that every day. It's like a part-time job that you have on the side. 
and you have to be diligent about that. You have to say, okay, these are the hours. You got to put that in your, your schedule, put that in your calendar, put that in your phone. Make sure that you follow that. Make sure that when you're working on your online business, you have no distractions. You can't have the kids coming in and your partner and the TV going on in the background. You got to have no distractions. You know, maybe you have a certain room or a place where you, it could be quiet. Maybe it's going to a different environment. Maybe it's going to a co-working space or maybe it's going to the library. Maybe it's going to a coffee shop, okay? Because Studies show that when you're in a certain state of focus and you're immersed in what you're doing, when you get interrupted okay, from the phone rings or whoever might be interrupting you, it takes 20 minutes for you to get back in that same level of flow and focus that you were in before. So you have to eliminate distractions as much as you can. You have to make sure you enroll the people in your life, okay, especially your family if, if, if you're around them every day. You need their support. Okay, they've got to understand the vision, the long-term goal to support you with that. Even your friends, they got to know, hey, I'm going to have to make this sacrifice. They know sometimes and miss out on some things, but I'm doing this so I could focus on this. This is important to me. You got to let them know that. You got to have them support you because if there's conflict, if they're holding you back, you're trying to make progress, but you got people that are pulling you by the shirt, holding you back, it's just going to be so much harder for you. You know, you got to have all the support that you can get. Uh, you know, going along this path. If they're not going to support you, then just don't don't tell them about what you're doing. You know, don't have discussions about it because you know they're they're going criti to criticize. You know, maybe what you're doing, and often they're criticizing because they feel insecure, they feel unhappy on some level in their life, or they're afraid that if you grow and you make this change in your life, then what is it going to mean for them? It's going to make them feel insignificant, and you know they're going to lose the love and connection they have with you. So, you know, that's something that often can happen as well. Um, one of my favorite ways to, to build my business, and something I did many, many times, is I learned about the power of immersion. There's two ways you can really do something or learn, is spaced repetition or immersion, okay? If you wanna learn a language, if you wanna learn Spanish, you could take a class once a week, but it's not gonna be the most effective way of doing it. It's gonna take you a long time for you to learn that, even if you did maybe a little bit every day. The best way to learn a language would be to go to Mexico or go to Spain and immerse yourself in the environment, the culture, so that you have to use the language. You're hearing it all the time around you. You're seeing the words on the menus and the signage and everything. It's just you're immersed in it. You're going to learn so much faster. And a lot of people, they do the space repetition when building their business, but it can take a lot longer time. So for me, my favorite way is to immerse myself. I'll have a day or two out of the week, and you could do this for yourself. Maybe it's picking a weekend, and you go all out, man. You, you work 16 hours a day for those two days, and tell me what it does for you. you know, I can guarantee that your business, what you get done in those two days is going to be probably more than what you can get done in a month or two. You know, I kid you not. You know, for, so for me, I would, I would put myself in an environment. Sometimes I would go to a place, like a new environment. I have a, a client of mine who rented an Airbnb. You know, he told his wife, he's like, listen, honey, I've, I got to, I got to get an Airbnb and I need to just work while I'm there because there's too many distractions being here at home. And she supported that. And he went in those two days, he got so much done. You know, he just fully immersed himself. He said, you know, I'm not coming back until I achieve this result, this outcome. I did a similar thing when I traveled to Southeast Asia and I said, you know, I'm not coming back to Canada until I achieve this goal. You know, and I just was so diligent with myself and I had that timeline, that deadline. And when you have that deadline, it creates urgency. So one of my favorite ways to work too is setting a timer. I'll set a timer and I'll say to myself, I'll sit on my phone or on my computer and an alarm will go off and I'll say, I have one hour to work on this. And you know, when that hit timer you know, hits zero, that's when I have to move on. Because I see a lot of people, they're trying to do something, they spend way too much time doing it and they're just wasting time, they're not being efficient with it. So when you have the timer, it's like, it basically eliminates that perfectionist mentality and you just gotta live with whatever, whatever that is. I, I might even do that when I'm writing something. I might find myself sp spending way too much time trying to write something. So I'll say, you know what, I've got an hour to write this. Whenever it hits zero, I've gotta publish it. <laughs> you know, there's no going back. And that urgency forces me to get it done forces me to work faster, to be more efficient with the time that I have because I know that when they hit zero, it's gonna get out there, it's gonna be live. So timers are great, immersion is very powerful. I've had even days where I've worked uh, over 24 hours straight with no sleep, okay, because I'm just so caught up in what I'm doing. 
that's something that Thomas Edison used to do a lot is he was known for like the 48 hour workday. And his mindset when he was interviewed about it, Thomas Edison, he said, when I start something, I have to finish it. Like it drives him insane if he doesn't finish it. So when he started, he, he has to finish it. He's got to keep going with it. You know, he can't, he, he, you know, he can't sleep until it's done. And I can, I can be like that as well a lot of the times where I'm like, you know what, once I start this, I've got to get this done. Otherwise, it's just always in the back of my, back of my mind, like an open loop that I'm waiting to complete and close. So a lot that I've shared with you guys, um, a lot of kind of strategies that I've used to build my business and hopefully it can help you guys you know, along your journey. But you know, as long as you guys are committed, you know, everyone has a different amount of time they can spend but, uh, or, or money and resources, but as long as you're committed, you'll get there. You know, it might take you longer than someone else. Uh, you know, the, the things that will fast track things is courses, training, resources, that'll save you a lot of time, it'll save you a lot of money in the long run. Working fast, working efficiently, scheduling your time, immersing yourself. Um, you know, I, I've shared this story before, uh, an old job that I had, you know I, I, you know, I just wanted to finish it as fast as I could. The faster I could finish it, the sooner I could go home. And I think that way sometimes in my business too, I just wanna work fast. So be, be fast, have a fast speed of imp implementation in your life and your business. Because for some people, they might take three hours trying to do something. Others, it might only take them an hour. Just because they're, they're moving their feet a lot faster, they're being more efficient with that. So you have to become a master of efficiency uh, you might have to invest in and learn time management if it's something that you're weak at. Okay, there's a lot of books and resources out there that you can find on Amazon that can help you with time management. Um, and uh, you know, again, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. You're going to have to uh, be resourceful and creative in different ways about how you can do it. And then also, I last piece I would say too: try to surround yourself as much as possible with like-minded people. That's something that's missing for so many people. Who you become is who you spend time with. And you've got to surround yourself with people that are also on the same path. People that, you know, ideally in person, but if not in, you know, Facebook groups and stuff like that. Um, surround yourself as much as possible with that because it will shift your beliefs, your mindset. It will give you more motivation. It will come more real for you. That's why I'm a big believer in going to events, seminars, masterminds, and getting coaches. Because I found I've grown so much more by doing those things than often anything else that I've done. So a lot that I've shared with you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, I want to also share with you guys uh, something I've got for you guys for free. I'll share with you guys two different things I think would benefit you after watching this. Uh, first is a quiz that I created that will help you identify the right online business model for you. And there's just a few questions that you can go through and it'll just, based on your responses, it'll direct you to the best online business model with pretty much like 95% accuracy that we've tested it. So if you want to take that quiz, go to www.projectlifemastery.com slash quiz. Uh, also, I've created a free course that shares seven different ways that I make money online. You can access that at projectlifemastery.com slash free course. And I'll link to these in the description of this video. Um, but check those out, uh, some additional resources that I think can help you guys out as well. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll talk to you again in the next one. Take care.